What's up everyone, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video I'll be talking about all the best features of Redmi 6 Pro. Now I've already made a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I'll be talking about many things which I won't be covering in this video. So definitely check out this video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, the first best feature about this phone would be its display. This phone sports a massive 5.84 inch IPS display with Full HD Plus resolution in the new 19:9 aspect ratio. It also has the display notch with 500 nits of brightness. Viewing angles and sunlight legibility are all pretty good. Even the picture quality is pretty good. Now the next best feature about this phone would be performance. This phone sports a Snapdragon 625 processor with Adreno 506 GPU with 3GB of RAM for the base variant and 4GB of RAM for the next variant. Now the Snapdragon 625 processor is a pretty old chip but it is still pretty good and this is the first phone from Xiaomi to come with a Snapdragon 625 processor with a display notch. Overall performance of this phone isn't awesome but it is still pretty good. Now going on next, it even has face unlock feature. Now just like most of the phones these days, even this phone has face unlock feature and it works really well, at least better than the previous Redmi phones. In good lighting conditions, it is pretty fast, it takes like half a second or a second to unlock. Even in complete darkness, it works but takes like a second or two. On the whole, it is pretty usable. Now going on next, this phone even has portrait mode for both the front and red cameras. These are the sample pictures. Now going on next, this phone even offers electronic image stabilization. Now by default it's always turned on and because of electronic image stabilization, some part of the sensor is cropped and you get a cropped footage. For some reason if you don't want stabilization and want a much wider footage, you can always disable it from the settings. This is the sample footage. Stabilization looks pretty good. Now going on next, it also has the famous infrared blaster. Now this is a particular feature many brands out there have dropped but still Xiaomi is providing it with almost all the Xiaomi phones except the Poco ones. Using this sensor along with the MI remote app, you can control anything, TV, AC or anything that has an infrared sensor. Just in case if you can't find your remote in MI remote app, it also supports third party applications like Peel Smart Remote. Now going on next, you also get a fingerprint gesture to take pictures. Now this feature is not enabled by default, at least as far as I know. You can always enable it from the camera settings. Now once you enable this feature in the default camera application, you can touch the fingerprint scanner to take a picture. You can also start and stop video recording. This feature is especially useful for taking selfies. Now going on next, we have the famous full screen gestures. Personally, this is my favorite implementation and probably the best implementation for full screen gestures on Android. Now for a quick preview, once you enable this feature, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home, swipe and hold for decent apps, swipe from the left side or right side to go back and swipe and hold to switch between the current application and previous application. This is really an awesome feature and I miss it on almost all the phones, especially on my OnePlus 6T. Now going on next, we have Quick Ball. You want to use your phone single-handedly? Then this is a great solution for you. Once you enable this feature, a floating bubble will pop up. You can use it in two ways. You can either tap and select the option or else we can swipe. Personally, I like to go with swipe option with navigation keys. Once everything is properly set up, you can simply swipe on the floating bubble to go back, go home or even open recent tabs page. Now going on next, we have some handy gestures. First we have the double tap to wake. Now this one is pretty simple. Just enable this feature and double tap your screen to wake it up. If you are using face unlock on this phone, then you can simply double tap your phone, phone wakes up, sees your face and immediately unlocks the phone. You don't even have to use the fingerprint scanner. It is super convenient. Now going on next, we have two super shortcuts to quickly open the camera application. First way is to open the camera application by pressing the power button twice. This particular shortcut works anywhere and anytime. Just enable it from additional settings and every time you press the power button twice, camera application will pop up almost immediately. Most of the time it works. 
Another way to open camera application is from the lock screen. Now once you enable this feature from lock screen settings, on your lock screen you can press the volume down button twice to quickly open the camera application. Well that's a feature and it works, but personally I still like to use the power button. Now going on next we have 3 finger screenshot. Now before I show you that feature, let me show you how to take a regular screenshot. On this phone or any other phone out there, especially Android phones, if you want to take a screenshot, press the volume down and power button both at the same time. Once you do that, your phone will take a screenshot. For some reason, if that's a bit difficult for you, you can always use the notification toggle. Now coming back to 3 finger screenshot, once you enable this feature, you can simply swipe down using 3 fingers to take a screenshot. This is personally my favorite way to take a screenshot. Next we have long screenshot. Now to take a long screenshot on this phone, first we need to take a regular screenshot. We can either use the buttons, notification toggle or the gesture. And once you have taken a picture, you will get a preview at the top right corner of the screen. Just click that and then click scroll. Your phone will scroll the current application automatically and then take a long screenshot. If you want to stop in between, you can always click the done button and it will take a long screenshot up to that point. You can find those long screenshots along with your regular screenshots. Next we have a shortcut to turn on the torch. Now there are many ways to turn it on, but personally I like to long press the back button to turn on the torch. This is how you do it. And once you're done, you can press and hold the back button anywhere, anytime. That's when your phone is unlocked to turn on the torch. Now that's definitely a very convenient way to turn on the torch, but doing it again doesn't turn it off. As for me, I press the power button twice to turn it off. Next we have dual apps. Now Xiaomi has this awesome feature called dual apps which allows you to use two instances of the same application. That means you can use two Facebook accounts, two Instagram accounts, two Twitter accounts or even two WhatsApp accounts on the same phone. Now there are many phones out there that offer a similar feature but all those brands offer this feature only for few applications, especially social media applications. While on this phone, we can use dual apps feature on literally all the applications. Next we have reading mode. On many other phones it's also called as night mode and once you enable this feature, it puts a warm tint on the screen and filters the blue light. According to research, blue light emitted by our displays at night will affect our sleep. So using this feature will prevent that. We can also change the intensity of the warm tint. We can also schedule it to turn on and turn off at a specific time or at sunrise and sunset. Now going on next, we also have the option to record calls automatically on this phone. Now this feature is definitely available in India but I don't know about other places and if you want to activate it, you need to open the phone dialer, go to settings, then select call recording and turn it on. You can either record all the calls or few specific calls. If you have signed into your MI account, you can also back up all these call logs. Going on next, we have one handed mode. Now for some reason, if you think this phone has a massive display and if you can't use it single handedly, you can use this feature. Once you turn on this feature, you can swipe on the navigation bar from home to left or right to shrink the screen. In this mode, you can literally do anything, make calls, take pictures and do everything with a single hand. You can swipe in the same direction to go full screen. You can swipe in the opposite direction to switch to the other side and do it again to go full screen once again. From settings, you can also change the size of this window. I meant the screen. Next, we have some pretty cool gestures related to phone calls. First we have flip to silence finger. Now just like the name suggests, when your phone is lying on a flat surface, when you get a call, you can flip your phone to silence the ringer. Next we have quiet ringer when lifted. Once you enable this feature, whenever you get a call, you can pick up your phone and the ringtone volume goes down. It won't go completely silent, but ringtone volume does go down. Here's a quick preview. Next we have increasing ringtone volume. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call, ringtone volume starts with low volume and gradually increases. Here's a quick preview. Next we have flash when ringing. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call, your flashlight, that's the rear flash, flickers. Here's a quick preview.
Next, we have mute first string from unknown numbers. Now, once you enable this feature, every time you get a call from any unknown number, first string, that's probably two to three seconds, will be silent and after that, you will hear the ringtone. Here's a quick preview. Next, this phone has a super handy feature to identify unknown numbers. Just like Truecaller, Xiaomi collects information from various sources to identify spam and scam calls. It isn't as effective as Truecaller, but it does work. Next, we have a brand new feature called Game Speed Booster. Now, this is like a dedication application in itself. And once you open it up, this is how it looks like. You can add all your games to this list and then swipe right for settings. Now, from here, you can do a lot of things. Improve the gaming experience by clearing the cache. You can also configure the navigation shortcuts, restrict network switching while playing the game, restrict background sync, prioritize network usage, enable silent mode, hands-free mode, and even fix the screen brightness. Whenever you open any of the games from your list, all these settings will be applied automatically. Next, we have secondary space. Now, this feature creates a small box kind of a thing in your phone where you can have different accounts, different set of apps, and so on. If you need two different phones for your work and for your personal life, using this feature, we can do with it with just one phone. Now, going on next, we can also change the background app usage. MIUI offers you additional options to tweak individual apps to further improve battery life. You can completely stop applications from running in the background. You can restrict background access. You can restrict background sync and usage and do stuff like that. It might help, but usually its effects are not that visible. Now going on next, we have wireless display. Now using this feature, you can cast the screen of your phone to any television with Miracast or to a Chromecast. This feature works really well with MI TVs. Next we have MI Mover. Now, if this is a brand new phone and if you want to transfer all your data from your previous Xiaomi phone to this new Xiaomi phone, you can use this feature. Just select MI Mover on both phones and do the needful to transfer all your data from your previous phone to your brand new phone. Next, we have MI Drop. Now, this is a feature just like Share It app for Xiaomi phones. It comes pre-installed on all the phones and using this feature, you can transfer any kind of data, whether it's applications, photos, videos or anything or Wi-Fi between two Xiaomi phones. Next, we have local backup. In backup and reset settings, we have the option to backup everything on your phone, along with user data. This is really handy when you have to reset your phone and quickly take a backup of your apps. Now, when you reset your phone, all this data will be deleted. So once you are done with the backup, copy it to your PC or a pen drive and transfer it back to your phone once you are done resetting your phone. Now going on next, we have some features to improve the audio experience on headset. Now using this particular page, you can select the type of headset you are using. If you are already using a Xiaomi headset, you can further tune your phone to give you best results for that particular headset. You also get the equalizer settings to tweak the audio further according to your preference. Next we have lock screen carousel. Now if you are a person who likes to change lock screen wallpapers all the time, this is a great feature for you. Once you enable this feature in the lock screen, touch the screen once and click the button at the top right corner of the screen. Now once you do that, you can swipe left or right to change the lock screen wallpapers. You can like them, delete them and even go to settings and customize this feature further. Now going on next, we have themes. If you are someone who likes to tweak the look and feel of your phone, then Xiaomi phones or MIUI itself is great for that. You have tons of themes, tons of fonts and wallpapers and stuff. You can download it from the themes app and apply them with just a click of a button. Here's a quick preview. Next, we have a super handy feature called Scanner. It's more like an application itself. Now this is how it looks like. You can scan a regular QR code and most importantly, take pictures of documents. Now, no matter which angle you take pictures in, it automatically aligns the page, changes the perspective and crops the image to give you the perfect document. You can also grayscale it and copy the text from the image. Next, we have screen recording. Now, if you're someone who likes to record the screen of your phone, then on this phone, there is a dedicated application called recorder just to do that. 
Just open the application and click the record button. You will see a floating button and you can start recording whenever you want by clicking that big red button. Once you're done, you can click the stop button and you can find that recording in your gallery. Next we have a feature called SMS Schedule. Now using this feature, we can automatically send an SMS on a specific date at a specific time. This is probably one of the most coolest features of this phone. Well nowadays most people don't send messages, well especially SMS, but if you are someone who want to automate it, you can do it on this phone. Next we have auto start permission. No matter how many times you kill any application or close an application, some applications start automatically in the background, say like Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, and they end up draining the battery, especially if you don't use those apps a lot. So using this feature you can restrict those applications from auto starting in the background. Next we have pocket mode. Once you enable this feature, your phone will prevent all accidental touches when your phone is in your pocket. Next we have app vault. Now looking at the name you might think it's an app lock kind of a feature, well it's not. In the default launcher on the leftmost screen, you get a dedicated page with multiple widgets for quick shortcuts, notes, stock prices, call a cap feature, cricket scores and so on. So if you want to see this page, enable app vault and if you want to hide it, disable it. Next we have the option to mirror buttons. Now usually on most phones, especially phones with pure stock android, it doesn't give you the option to swap the back and menu button. But on this phone, we can do it. Next we have an app lock built into the system. We can set it up with a different password from your lock screen password and obviously lock applications. Now whenever you try to open any locked application, you have to either enter the password or we can use a fingerprint scanner. Now there are many third party applications which can do the same but this feature comes inbuilt and it's quite secure. Next we have private SMS. Now for some reason if you want to hide messages from a specific contact, using this feature you can do that. In the default messaging application, you can swipe down until you see the lock to enter the private messages space. Once again you have to set up a password and it can be different from your lock screen password and app lock. From here you can configure this feature. Next we have folder vault. Now using this feature, we can hide files on your phone. Whether it's a video, photo or any other file, you can hide all those files in the folder vault. To use this feature, open the file manager and swipe down until you see the lock icon. Once again you have to set up a password and it can be different from any other password you have already set. Now once you are done configuring this feature, you can select any file, go to menu and click hide to hide that file. So guys, those were all the best features. If I missed on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on tips and tricks section, link is in the description. Now if you are planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description, it always helps the channel and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I am Nikhil from Greedy Tech signing off, have a nice day.